It's nice to be back here this morning and to share with you within the life of the church. In particular, I want to just welcome all those members of the church here at Barnby Dunn, also members of the Church of the Good Shepherd at Edenthorpe and Kirk Sandal, and to be nice to know that you're able to share with us in the service today. Today we're going to celebrate Holy Communion. If you haven't done so already, please get yourself a small piece of bread and have it ready for when we come to the communion service in order that you can share with us as we break bread and share together in receiving the Holy Communion. Now I'm going to begin by asking Colin to come and to give us the notices. Good morning. Today is Thursday the 9th of July and it's Carol Lee's birthday. Many happy returns, Carol, and I hope you have a good day. There aren't many notices today uh, other than to say that the church continues to be open for prayer on Tuesday, Thursday and Sunday. However, the PCC are due to have a meeting next week to work out how we can open for public worship, which we're allowed to do from the 4th of July. So we ask for prayers uh, for ourselves, for the PCC, for patience and for discernment in our deliberations. This morning, we're going to be thinking about the Word of God. Just a verse from Psalm 119. Your word is a lamp to my feet, a light on my path. Accept, Lord, the willing praise of my mouth and teach me of your love. Enable us, O Father, to respond to the grace of your word with humility of heart and in the spirit of love that our lives may be conformed more and more to the image of your Son, Jesus. Amen. So we're now going to sing our first song, which you can join in with, as we remember that we've come into God's house, into his church again. We're going to sing, we will come into this house and praise God once more. to hear the parable of the sower as he went out and sowed the seed into the fields. 
That parable is going to be read to us by Sandy A. Caster. The Gospel this morning is taken from Matthew, chapter 13, beginning to read at verse 1. The parable of the sower. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered round him that he got into a boat and sat down. While all the people stood on the shore, then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came out, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. For the seeds fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seeds fell on good soil, where it produced a crop. A hundred, sixty or thirty times what was sown. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The one who receives the seed that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. The one who receives the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it and make it unfruitful. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty or thirty times what was sown. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord, take my words and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you. In Jesus' name, Amen. The parable today is about the Word of God being scattered, the seed being scattered on the field by the sower. The Word that he speaks about is not just words from the Bible. It's not just the words from the sermon on a Sunday morning. It's not just what the vicar says. It's rather what each one of us says. And what we say day by day as we actually speak and share not only the word of God, but our ordinary everyday living. Do you remember Canon and Bull a few years ago? Uh, still just about about. But when Tommy Cannon was actually converted as a Christian in a church, one of the things that Tommy... Uh, that, um, that Ball wrote about him, Bobby Ball um, wrote about him, he said this, before Tommy found the Lord, he could not say a single sentence without profanity coming out of his mouth. Since the minute that he walked out of the church, he hasn't sworn once and has said that he doesn't need to. Something special in the way that he spoke way that his words actually came out of his mouth. We often speak regularly to people. Sometimes we get it wrong. Sometimes we say the things that we shouldn't. Sometimes we share things that we shouldn't share. But all the time, we must be trying to actually speak the word of God. We must always try to share God's words and speak the way that he would like us to speak. Two words from the 
Old Testament reading that we could have had today says this. Isaiah writes in chapter 55, As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to, to life without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so my word that's gone out from my mouth, it will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Isaiah has that picture, very important picture, isn't it? The word of God having a very important place in the life of the church. As the word of God goes out, so it does the work that it's intended to do and that God wants it to do. The parable today speaks about the word of God being taken out and being used and taking a place in the world. Not all of it achieves the things that we were meant to do. Some of it falls in different places. Some of it falls on hard ground by the side of the fields where people have walked and trodden the earth down. And there it's unable to grow. It speaks about those people who are hard of heart, people who have had lives where they find it very difficult to take in some of the things that God wants them to. Some of it calls on rocky ground, where people actually immediately respond to it. But then after a short while, they change their minds. I can remember back to the days when Billy Graham was preaching and I went visiting people soon after they had made their confession of faith on the football ground. It was at Villa Park in those days. And some of them were actually happy to respond. But quite a few of them almost have forgotten what they said a few days earlier. And now we're actually saying, well, thank you, but no thank you. And then there's that that falls on thorny ground where the worries and the problems of the earth actually take over. And having even perhaps grown quite strong in the Christian faith, suddenly they move away. And it all becomes something of the past. But then, also we're told, there's that which falls on the good ground, on the good soil. And it's that that really produces fine fruit. And there are many people, even today, that actually can talk about their faith that began with that Billy Graham mission some 40 years or more ago. It's very important that the Word of God goes out and the Word of God is actually used and it actually brings forth faith in Christian people. So how is that word spread? The sower scattered the fields liberally. He scattered the seed on the ground and it went out into different places. And so we need to think how we share that food. I remember only a couple of weeks ago when Canon Sophie came and spoke on this service, how she spoke about the diocesan prayer a prayer perhaps that we don't use as often perhaps as we could do. A prayer that spoke about the important symbols of the Christian faith. The prayer says this, it says, Living God, Jesus calls his followers to seek first your kingdom. Renew us as we make your love known. Release us to share freely together in mission. And rejuvenate us to be fruitful in your service. Give us courage and wisdom and compassion that strengthened with the grace of the Holy Spirit we may as the Diocese of Sheffield both flourish and grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. So there are three words there. Three words that are symbols and which we sometimes use and which you can see on the cards that are actually available in the church. The words of renewed, released and rejuvenated. And each of those words is important, not only in the way that we 
proclaim the gospel, but also in the words that we speak, the words by which we talk. If we look on the diocesan website, we we'll see when it speaks about renewed to start with, it says renewed is about maintaining as our first priority a real reliance on the Spirit of God in prayer and worship and in the consecration of our lives as individuals and communities. It's about beginning by concentrating and asking God to lead us. And that should be what we're doing when we actually speak as well. Asking that the Spirit of God can come upon us to guide us in the way that we actually communicate, the way that we actually share the good news, the way that we talk to people, that we are led by the Spirit, not just when we're preaching about the Gospel, but in our day-to-day -day living. St Paul himself was very conscious of that when he wrote to the Ephesians about his own ministry, he said this, he said, pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given to me so that I will be fearless, make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Paul knew that he needed the Spirit of God to actually guide him in the things that he said, in the way that he spoke, in the way that he acted. And that's true therefore for us. As we speak, we need to know that God is there to be able to guide us and pray that most of the time we get it right and we say the things that God would want us to say. And then we talked about the word being released released. The website says to liberate untapped potential of individual disciples and whole congregations to make the most effective use of our resources, including our church schools. But somehow we need to be set free in order to be able to go and speak God's word. We may need to be released from our buildings. We may need to be released sometimes from all the paperwork that sometimes has to be done and for the administration that needs to go on. We need to be there in order to be able to minister and speak the word of God outside in the, uh, in the church yard and in the parish and in the community. I've often been interested by the thought that a lot of church services take place behind closed doors. We come into a building with walls around the outside of it where nobody can actually see us or hear us. It's good to be able to go outward as well. Out in Papua New Guinea, Dr George Kerry, a former Archbishop visited a cathedral which had a roof but no walls. People are able to enter, or if they preferred, just to hover around the edges and listen as they wished. He says it's a good illustration of what the Church of God should be, a church with blurred edges. It is good, isn't it, that what we say and what we talk about should be heard, heard outside in the community. I wonder if we have very often have outside services. Over the years I can think of quite a few that we've had and I've taken part in and some of them have been lovely. Times when we've actually gone out onto the field on Easter Sunday or at Pentecost and taken the service there in the park where people have actually walked by and can actually listen to the music being sung, to the words being spoken, where the church walls are not confining what we've said. I think it's lovely that we can sometimes have 
open air services and we can be able to share the word of God not within the church but outside in the congregation and it's nice also to be able to think of places where that can take place the diocese speaks particularly of schools and there's actually a comment in the diocesan website saying that they really hope that in the next five, six years, they can actually start 25 new congregations in church schools or in other schools, in places outside the building, in places that are different. It would be great to think of ways in which we can move out and that the word of God can be released, released from the church building and taken out into the congregation, into the parish into the area. And then the third of the symbols on here is rejuvenated. The diocese writes, the age demographic of our membership is uneven. We are over dependent on older people and need to engage more with younger people. That's not just written about these churches, not just about the Beacon Mission, it's speaking about the diocese as a whole. That the church needs to reach out to younger people. You must be a church that cares for all age groups. Some years ago now, I was, of course, the diocese and youth officer looking and trying to work with young people and with children in particular and taking the gospel out to them. So important that becomes an important part of the life of the church because it's some of those young people, those young families that are going to be there at the heart of the church in a few years time. It's great to be able to see messy church taking place. It's great to be able to see children and young people come into the church building. And I must admit, I would love to see far more young people in the church on a Sunday each week. Somehow, we must be able to go out and reach to them. And one of the interesting things that's come out of the, um, the, the, the problems that we've had at the moment with COVID-19 is that we've had to be used much more of the internet and be able to talk much more on the internet. Maybe that's a lesson to the church to learn that we need to go out and use much more of modern communications that will enable us to communicate with younger families, with younger people and people that we know not so well and who perhaps are quite alien from the church building. And so let us pray that in the days to come, we may be able to take the word of God and just as the sower was able to scatter the word of God on the ground, so we can actually scatter the word of God in the parishes that we serve. In the early days of the church, those early apostles, those 12 first apostles were able to go out throughout Europe. They were able to scatter the seed sometimes painfully, sometimes with difficulty. But the result of their work was that within two or three hundred years, the story of Jesus, the good news of God, was able to be communicated, not just locally, but without, throughout Europe, and eventually throughout the world, as people everywhere came to know Jesus as Lord. Just as those 12 apostles grew a worldwide church, let us pray that we may be able to speak the word of God, that we may be able to scatter the seed of the word of God in the parishes to which we belong, so that people, young, old, middle-aged, families, and many others may come to know Jesus as Lord and Saviour. Amen. Now we come to our time of prayer.
and we're going to ask Marilyn Roebuck to lead us in our prayers this week. Let us pray with conf confidence to the Father, Lord of heaven and earth. Bless and strengthen the church to which the mystery of faith has been revealed. We pray for all our clergy and especially for the newly licensed that they may follow righteously in the footsteps of the Lord. Give thanks to those who are holding us all together in this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, come with healing into our world. We give thanks for the World Health Organization, for our government and their advisors, and for the NHS, who are all striving to rid us of this terrible pandemic. Lord, help all to do the right thing and help us to see an end to, our, to the suffering and bereavement that is now upon us. Help us to stay safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, make us more tolerant to the needs of others in our community who need our help in this time of crisis. We are grateful to our local businesses and workers who strive to provide the necessities of our lives. We give thanks to all the key workers. Bless them all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are ill in body, mind. Please give respite to all who suffer from sickness problems that have been put aside because of the COVID-19. We especially think of those in our community and our friends and neighbours and loved ones known to us. Lord, bring them to your side to find comfort and assurance in your love. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for the departed who have found eternal rest. We give thanks that, thanks that the fullness of the divine love is now known. We especially think of Jack, a dear friend of us all, who we are sure is now drumming in heaven. We give love and comfort to Arlene and her family. May the Lord be at your side. May our prayers be accepted in the name of Christ, who has called us to be his messengers. Amen. As we come to share in the Holy Communion, let us ask God to help us to prepare our hearts. Lord Jesus, stand among us now in your risen power. Cleanse our hearts and our minds and make yourself known to us in the breaking of bread to your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross, and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sins. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, 
This is my body which is given for you in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, he took the cup of wine. He gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shared for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. And as we share these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our Lord. So with our whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And so now as Jesus taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so, at home, let us take the bread that you have and to break it in half and to share that together. The body of Christ that was given for us, keep us in eternal life. And the blood of Christ that was shed for us, keep us in eternal life. Almighty God, we just thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that we may go out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. As we come to the end of our service, let us just share together, first of all, in the collect for this week. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer, which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry, they may serve you in holiness and truth, to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We think once more of that diocesan prayer. Living God, Jesus calls his followers to seek first your kingdom. Renew us as we make your love known. Release us to share freely together in mission and rejuvenate us to be fruitful in your service. Give us courage, wisdom, and compassion that strengthened with the grace of the Holy Spirit, we may, as the Diocese of Sheffield, both flourish and grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. So now may the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God 
and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. In the Old Testament reading today, which I spoke about in the sermon, we spoke about the Word of God not being empty, but being accomplished. Isaiah followed that, the next sentence, by saying that we shall then go out with joy to actually proclaim that gospel. And that next sentence, Isaiah 55 verse 12, has actually been written as a hymn. And so we're going to sing that hymn today. You shall go out with joy and bring forth with peace. Shall go out.